How's it going everybody? It's Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast and getting into the interior of my BN1 restoration. So um, I, I am going for concourse on this. So um, I've made, this is one of my right way heritage trimming BN1 interiors complete that I've made from scratch myself in all the correct materials. Um, however, I am, I do want to drive this car and enjoy it for many decades to come. So. Uh, I am taking extra steps to insulate it better than the factory did, um, just in areas I know I can get away with it. Um, so for any concourse judging, I don't want to have anything non-standard noticeable. But uh, so what I'm doing though, is originally the just used uh, quarter inch jute insulation along the firewall and tunnel sections. So um, what I'm doing is in the tow boards where it's all glued carpet. There's the carpet pieces right there. Um, the carpet's all glued to the floor with jute sandwiched underneath of it against the metalwork. I'm also going to add, just along the firewall, some of this uh, 3M peel and stick insulation. I'll show you this. This is the 3M uh, sound deadening pads, and they do a lot for sound deadening and uh, heat deadening and uh, make a big difference. It's, it's just black on the surface. They come in 24 inch squares and they're perforated down the center and really easy to cut with your scissors. And so I'm just taking my jute insulation, laying them on here, chalking it out and cutting it out and making a mirror um, panel. So as you can see, I've put that one in and it sticks really well, just peel and stick, and you can nestle it down over. Uh, those are just the bolts for the um, insulation panels on the other side of the firewall. Anything that I believe I might have to access, like these pedals or the dimmer switch, you know, these are things that might fail or need adjustments, so I've left those accessible. Um, but those insulation panels, won't, I don't think will ever need to come off. Um, so now I'm gonna, uh, lay another piece in on this side wall and same thing for the passenger side, do the same thing over there and then cover this with the quarter inch jute and then finally the carpet pieces. Now, uh, carpet tow boards on BN1s and BN2s and uh, well, most Heelys all the way through actually, big Heelys, um, it was one piece of carpet that does the flat, the, the tow board angles, so that face and this face here, but it also, there's a little cut in the upper corner and it just does a 90 on those inside corners and it also covers this side face and just wraps around this edge underneath of this panel. So I've got to remove this panel before I put in those carpets, but uh, yeah, it's just one piece of carpet that does these two faces and, uh, and does the angle there, like I say, with a little cut in the corner. So I sell these pre-cut, ready to go. Um, so here's that piece of carpet. I've just got a high market on the back. That's where for the dimmer switch and the two pedals and the gas pedal. So this is gonna lay in there and then there's gonna be a 90 degree bend in it right here where it wraps around. And this is proper blue Carvel as they were with the ribbing going up and down as they were. And um, yeah, with the Hessian jute backing. And here's the quarter inch jute pads that I'm gonna glue in underneath of the carpet. So I sell sets of this as well. This is as close to the original as I've been able to get. It's got the black coating on one side and it is quarter inch thick and it is jute. So really accurate stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go about gluing these in and we'll show you the end results. Okay, and there's the two jute panels installed with the uh, sound deadening underneath of them. Again, you can't even tell other than that little spot right there, which will be covered with carpet. So the next step, um, with once the jute is installed in those tow board areas, uh, I still have one more piece to go that goes in the top there. Um, a lot of people forget to add that piece. Well, it's because most companies don't sell it. However, I do and uh, that's what those pieces look like. There's one for either side. So there's the passenger side arrangement. So that's on the straight piece that does the uh, 45 degree angle. There's the inner side piece and then that's the top piece. 
that little cutout goes around the uh, vents that are in the top of that. You can see along the firewall, that's, that's a air box for fresh air to come in. And uh, when you open up the fresh air tube, it blows down on your feet through those vents. Yeah, but anyway, there's insulation all the way around there. The next piece to go in is this jute. Then I'll put in generally the sills and uh, sills are the first piece of carpet to go in on any Healy. So once the sills are installed over the insulation, then you can start putting in the rest of the carpet. So these pieces of carpet will go in next and they just come up to that top edge right there. And uh, so the finished product, you'll see that jute, the black coated jute exposed there. That's how they were finished. I've just glued in the toe board carpet. So that is how that carpet goes in and uh, went in really nicely. Um, there's a little bit of excess on the outside here that you have to trim off even with that flange edge. And of course now I've got to use my trusty awl and find the three screw, screw holes for mounting that cover panel. Uh, so I'll just mark them with chalk and poke them through. But uh, yeah, that's how that fits. Uh, like I say, my pattern, I always supply it with the uh, petals marked on the carpet, so you can just cut them. Um, uh, gas petals, just, uh, you know, you cut a straight line up and then cut the hole, so it's like a flap there. Uh, so there's a seam that you can't even see. You can just see the edge of it there. That's how they were done. And uh, just got to nip the corner there where it is in that corner. But uh, other than that, that's how they finish. And there's that visible piece of jute up there. That That's how that finishes as well. It just always remains visible like that. So um, now I can do the other side, identically the same, uh, same process. I'll start with the uh, um, sound deadening material first, and then the quarter inch jute, and then the carpet. Um, putting the sill in first, and then the toe board carpet. And then, once those pieces are in, I can fit the uh, bell housing cover panel there. And I've already pre-trimmed the bell housing cover panel. This is the BN1 style, which is just a flat plate. BN2s were more curved, uh, they, they wrapped around the sides. But BN1s did not, they were just flat like this. So it's just a panel, it's covered in uh, quarter inch jute. Um, again, I used a bit of that uh, sound deadening stuff under here as well. Um, so. Yeah, and then the layer of quarter inch jute, and it just wraps around all the sides like that. And of course, before you put on anything, there's that rubber seal that goes onto the uh, seals around the gearbox there. And all Heelys, well, all Heelys that had this cover panel at least, so all the uh, hundreds and 106 and early 3000, uh, up until center shift cars basically, um, they all had this, uh, rubber seal and it's just you know thick piece of neoprene. This is actually my original one still carrying on and it's just uh, riveted on around the outside with uh, split copper split rivets and washers So that goes on first and then you trim the rest and uh, Notice the chocolate brown paint on this um, it Basically Long bridge built cars seem to have in common that all of the interior steel components were painted in this dark chocolate brown. And it is my assumption that I think that, you know, these panels were all fabricated in the same metal shop and then sent to the various departments. Uh, so all the interior components were painted in this chocolate brown, maybe to identify them so they could be sent to the interior department. I don't know, just a guess, but, uh, you know, the seat steel frames and that, and the and the, uh, the parcel tray and the battery box lid, all of those removable pieces, this, this center tunnel section here and the main tunnel body, all the removable steel pieces from the interior that needed to be trimmed seem to have been painted in that dark chocolate brown. So pretty neat. And that applies to all long bridge cars. So BN1s, BN2s, early BN4s um, that were in standard production. So there is the tow board carpet, sill carpets, and forward bulkhead panel installed. Um, so 
Uh, I should have mentioned before we got started here, the first step of any Healy interior, big Healy interior, is the uh, tar paper that just lays on the floors and uh, it's just glued around the perimeter. They all had it, one big piece for each side and uh, you know, seat tracks and everything went on top of it, all the felt and everything went on top of it. So that was the first piece to go in on both sides. It's a factory original spec. So um, yeah, these are nicely in place now. Um, there's the jute under felt in the top and this guy just screws in with uh, three quarter inch long trim screws and washers similar to what the panels use but these ones are a bit longer the panels are like five eighths and these are three quarters um, and you see that rubber nicely seals around the gearbox there and, uh, and then there's the passenger side notice there's overlap down onto the floors and where the kick panel is going to be so that there's no gaps so that is intentional my pieces are all a little bit oversized sills um, that's and that's what Healy carpets did they they uh, overlapped onto uh, or underneath of the next piece to go in so back here you're gonna have armor cord that comes and neatly cuts around that but uh, we'll cover that and uh, same thing on the floors the the mats overlap that edge and uh, so it's all nice and neat there's no gaps anywhere um, I always leave these uh, sill cutouts in my carpet. I leave them a little bit oversized so that you can get a perfect fit. They're just cut with scissors. So, you know, some people have <laughs> said, hey, that's not a perfect fit with the pattern. Well, it, you know, every car is slightly different, especially when you get into restorations where sills are getting changed often. So I leave them a little bit oversized there so you can cut them to fit perfectly. So I've just installed this uh, piece of fur flex in here, um, preparing to put in the kick panel. So as you can see, the, you just glue its tail along the flange. I think I pointed it out earlier um, when I was installing the windshield posts. So this tail comes up here and then you snip it uh, even with the edge there. And, uh, and then its tail flips around here and gets stuffed underneath of the windshield posts the rest of the way up. So once that was stuffed in there, then I can tighten up these windshield post bolts. And that is what holds that in place. And now the uh, kick panel can come in and it'll help hold it out even. And uh, it will screw in place using my original screw holes there. So that'll finish off the foot wells. And of course at the top here, so this being an early BN1, it just, there is a rubber seal that glues in here. Um, it's not like the BN2 in later cars where it, it's like a bulb seal that uh, has like a, a pronounced drain tube. Uh, it's nothing like that. It's just a rectangle of, of rubber that comes in here and wraps around the corner, goes underneath the cockpit rail there. So I can put those in now. Um, yeah, and again, it just comes down to here and stops. Uh, whereas later, BN1, BN2, they, they had a proper seal that kind of went around the fender here and came down basically to the top of the hinge, but it helped. It was a much more effective uh, seal later on. Uh, and in fact, there was a, an amendment to install the later seals because they discontinued the earlier seal at one point. And to install the newer style seals, you would have to cut off this little channel here um, and then rivet the new ones in place. So, but I'm keeping this original for early BN1, so I'll just be installing the earlier style of seal here. And there's that uh, seal installed. Like I say, it's just a rectangular seal. It tapers at the end and tucks under the uh, cockpit rail here. And at this end, it just, left a little bit long I think I'm gonna probably cut off that last three quarter of an inch but you can see as the door closes against it it creates a seal there so and uh, not to forget there's also a quarter round seal that goes along the bottom here and it just glues in place so and it seals against that lower trim plate nicely so next installing the tunnel um, I've already trimmed the main tunnel body and, and this rear removable section. So I've got to trim this now in, it also gets a piece of Carvel carpet on BN1s, 
Later BN2s actually got Armacord here instead of carpet. That was something they changed. So, but this will be carpet on my car. So we'll get that in first, and then I can proceed to put in the rear Armacord back here. Okay, so coming along, moving into the rear section now. I'm uh, preparing to install the wheel arch covers, and I first put in these uh, jute pads, which on early BN1s, I've noted on multiple cars that I've found, original cars, uh, it was this large kind of teardrop shape, this pad. Uh, whereas later on, later BN1s and BN2s, uh, they just covered this flat D spot. There's a flat area right here that the top frame rests against. That's why there's a pad here so that you don't uh, pierce the top frame with the, with the uh, sorry, pierce the top itself with the frame as it's all sandwiched in here. So gives it a nice little pad to rest against and uh, prevents premature wearing. Um, yeah, early BN1s had this larger pad, whereas later on they, they tightened it up and just covered the flat spot. So I'm just following original stuff that that was made from my original pieces that I removed from my car. I made a pattern from them. And uh, so now I can put on the sewn vi vinyl wheel arch cover, which glues all the way around here. There's lots of excess to glue all the way around. Um, and uh, yeah, and you just have the, it's bead of piping kind of follows the arc up there. Uh, so I'll show you how those go. Here's the actual wheel arch covers themselves that I've sewn. So we get that piece of piping. So the way I usually do it is, um, I'll glue up uh, one half of it up to the piping, glue up one face, glue up that, and then uh, stick it down. And then while the other side is folded open, then you can glue the, the other half. So you do it in half sections, makes it a lot easier. You can get it a lot tighter. Um, and as you put it on, you're going to want to pull tension along this piping to get all the wrinkles out. So pull it really tight in both directions. That'll get all the wrinkles out. So, and right in this corner is where your spare wheel block goes. So the wheel arch cover goes in and then, uh, and then your spare wheel bag goes on and then the spare wheel block, triangular shaped block right here, it screws in from the outside. You can see it's screw holes there. This is my original block in its original vinyl. So this is original factory vinyl, almost 70 years old here. And I just want to show you this because the vinyl I am now using on all of my Austin Healy kits is the proper, correct English vinyl that they were using. You can see the backing of it is is a dark blue as well as the uh, as well as the face of it. It's got that leather cloth look. It's quite thin. It's non-stretch vinyl leather cloth, as they called it. So this is my original piece, and if you compare it to this is the new vinyl I've got. Yeah, if you compare it, you can see that is the stuff. Exactly it. So, really nice to have been able to source the correct vinyl for all the Heelys that we're trimming. It is the right stuff. I'm actually gonna reuse this spare wheel block just so I can have an original piece still of original trim in my car. Um, it's kind of up in the shadow so you'll never notice, but uh, I'll know anyway. Before I continue uh, installing the rest of the tunnel sections, which just screw in place, they're all pre-trimmed pieces that I've already done, I um, have to make sure you reach in and find the original holes to put in these uh, 10x studs. Poke them through and they just go in with a, a nut and a lock washer on the inside. So that's for fitting the armrest later on, and then this removable tunnel, tunnel section here has the forward 10x snap in it as well. So make sure you locate those before you seal it all in there. Okay, so I've got this wheel arch cover started. I've glued the one side, and so what I did was I glued the piping itself all the way down, and then I glued just around the outer third. I didn't I didn't coat the whole thing because I want it to float off the edge of that uh, jute on the inside. I don't want to define the line of that jute. I want it to kind of get lost in there and look smooth. 
So yeah, just glue the outside perimeter like two inches basically. And same thing with this piece. I, now that the piping is glued down all the way along, and like I say, I, I stretched it nice and tight along there to pull out all the wrinkles. So I've glued up the body. Now I'm just gonna glue the outer two inches perimeter and pull it tight to hide any of these lines. Okay, and there you go. There is the finished wheel arch cover fully installed. And like I say, nicely hid the edges of that quarter inch jute just by floating it off the end and only gluing around the outer, you know, two or three inches. And uh, yeah, that looks beautiful. So now I can carry on with the next one. I've got its piece of jute in there. So I'll just glue on the wheel arch cover. Look at that, moving right along. So I've got that uh, main rear bulkhead arm cord installed now, as you can see. Uh, had to temporarily take the, remove the door, and then uh, I like to lay the, the piece of arm cord in place, get it all centered and look and happy, and then uh, just put a weight on one side and flip it around halfway sort of thing, and glue up one side, glue up there, and then flip it back, stick it, get it all really nice, and then uh, do the other side. So again, doing things in halves allows you to get things perfectly centered and where it needs to be. Um, and along the bottom here, um, it is pressed in, there's body pressings there that the armor cord actually presses into. So if you get up close, you can kind of make out those impressions. Um, so yeah, once it's all in place, um, you, uh, it trims into this opening and just wraps around the edges like that. You just cut it into the corners. That's how they were done. Along the top edge here, it just kind of wraps over the edge a little bit and you have to cut little slots around the uh, hinges and you screw, screw it in place and then just put those, glue the flaps down over top of the uh, screws. And so that finishes that piece. Um, and the last thing I got to do here is install the uh, lift the dots. There's female snaps in the, in the straps here. And then the male studs come through here. I should be able to find my original holes just by reaching around from the other side. Uh, I might have to take a battery out for that. Batteries out for that, but uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Put the studs in and then locate where the snaps need to be while pulling this tight down. So next piece to go into the back here is uh, the spare wheel bag. And it is also sewn to a piece of armor cord that makes up the floor of the spare wheel compartment. So I'll have to uh, lay that in there, glue the armor cord down and it goes right into the back, um, into the boot compartment there. And then uh, once that's glued down, then you pull the spare wheel bag through and it glues all around the edge here. And you can see there's, uh, there's my original holes there. There's three rivets that go along the top there. And they're just uh, those black uh, squished together two part, they're called speedy rivets. And they were always black on these. So uh, you gotta have one person on the inside to hold an anvil up hard against the one part of the rivet and then on the outside another person uh, hammers it down so it is a tricky two-person job to get those rivets in there but uh, that's all part of it okay and that is the spare wheel bag now installed so went in nice and easy like I say I glued that inner piece of armor cord down first got it nice and centered and then just did the top starting in the corner here making sure the corners are lined up and making sure that that edge is nicely in the corner all the way around. And uh, yeah, so now it can uh, get those rivets going along the top. There's three of them. And then uh, I can put in this rear piece of armor cord, which finishes the whole thing. Now this is, I should point out, this is the early BN1 style of spare wheel bag, which uh, uh, it was much fatter of a bag. And later on, uh, mid 54 ish um, 
they, they made a number of changes to the interiors of BN1s and one of the things was they narrowed this bag down. So it started full width here and then narrowed down and it was, they made it fit uh, the Dunlop road speed tires that these Heelys all came with. So uh, this earlier bag was quite baggy and sloppy looking on those early tires. However, having said that, modern tires uh, fit this bag much better and the later style bag is actually a bit too narrow for the average modern tire. So unless you've got the early bias ply tires, this is a much better bag to go along with. Uh, it'll fit most of today's tires, no problem. And there you go, rear bulkhead armacord is all nicely installed. Um, as you can see, it has like a flap that you just hand glue that around that upper edge there and, uh, and then the cockpit rail will finish it. Um, yeah, so that's looking really good. Um, so next to go in back there is the rear quarter panels, which will go in here and they are pre-drilled with the three holes for installing the top frame. So you can put those in and then uh, poke the holes through from the back or from the front, either way. Um, the rear quarter panels themselves come up to just past those holes and then they have a flap as well that glues along the top, just like the rear piece does. And uh, so it's just, you know, a single thickness of vinyl that the cockpit rail has to go over in those areas. So you wanna make sure you cut it even. Uh, you don't want a whole bunch of extra thicknesses there. And yeah, so we can go ahead and put those rear quarter panels in. Uh, I should note, actually, before I fully install those, I can, I can basically offer them up and screw them in place, but I will have to take them out again when I go to put uh, the aluminum door opening trims. Uh, so there's aluminum plates here that are gonna cover that flange and wrap around on the inside a bit, and those rear quarter panels go over top of them, so. Uh, when I go to put those door pieces in, I'll have to remove the rear quarter panels temporarily to finish it all off. Okay, so just about to carry on with the rest of the arm cord. Uh, so next I'm going to turn my focus on trimming the boot. So you can see I, I put this piece in sort of tacked the center of it. I've left both sides. You can lift them up because I'm going to have to put in the, the covers for both sides there, which actually underlap it. Uh, and you can see this piece also has a sewn flap on it, which is going to glue along this front edge uh, all the way along. So there is an order of operation back here. So for trimming a boot, uh, generally the First piece I always like to wrestle in is this lower piece, which uh, you gotta make cutouts for the gas, gas tank, which I mark them on the pattern. Um, and then uh, some people have different style straps and stuff or different size gas tanks, so I never cut them, but uh, they're marked on the pattern. And then this is a cutout as well. Sometimes needs to be enlarged depending on your car. Um, and yeah, you just wrestle it in so it slides partially under the gas tank there and then comes up here. It's bound around and it kind of tucks under this edge, although it has to come out a little bit for some of these wire clips and whatnot. But uh, that's basically how it goes. And uh, yeah, sits nice and smooth in there. So the next pieces to go in here are the wheel arch covers, so left and right. So. Um, I can put this one in pretty straightforward. Like I say, it's got an undercut there and it goes all the way to the front. It'll, um, actually I can pull that spare wheel bag. I can pull its piece of vinyl under and the wheel arch cover. It's a two piece assembly that's sewn as you can see right there. It's that one. So, and then you can kind of see how these pieces orient themselves in the boot here. You got the main mat. And that upper bulkhead panel there and for trimming inside the box there's the floor and the back wall this is a double piece that does both sides of that wall and then of course the other side is the same sort of thing but first pieces to go in are these wheel arch covers and uh, and then everything kind of follows that so let's get into it so I've got the one side in 
uh, wheel arch covers in and I've also added this rear side panel piece that just butts up and overlaps the wheel arch cover there. And, uh, and then I've put my spare wheel block back in. That's my original one, as I was saying before. And this is now glued back down and it'll be held down tight once I pull this flap around. But uh, there is some uh, nuts under there that uh, the upholstery just floats over. Those are for the bump stop boxes. So, um, and same thing on this side, you can see there's those four nuts for the bump stops. So I'm just gluing up this side to put in its wheel arch cover. As you can see, I had to unbolt the uh, stay rod and its wooden block. So get the wheel arch cover in and, uh, and then bolt that back up again. So just using a prop rod temporarily. Okay, so moving right along here. So I finished uh, with this side, got the wheel arch and then this rear piece in. And then I proceeded with uh, getting these, uh, this piece in here that does both sides of that as a vinyl piece, so connecting the two sides. And then uh, once that piece was in, I was able to get this stuck down again on this side and, and glue that vinyl flap down like I was showing you earlier. And then this piece could go in the rear bulkhead section. And it just glues along. It's got cutouts for the brackets. It's got uh, cutouts for the uh, fuel tank sender and uh, um, fuel line. And, uh, and then there's another uh, vinyl flap that wraps around that top edge on the inside. And once that's in there, you can put in that back wall piece and this floor piece. And uh, I've finished it off with the proper uh, battery switch tag as original. And so now all that's left is I've got a... So early BN1 has a different style boot mat and side mats than later BN1 and BN2s had. So the early BN1, as you can see here, has this early style of mat and it's not full width. At the top here, it just covers the gas tank and stops right about there on either side. And then to finish off that whole side piece, you've got these long side pieces, whereas uh, the later style mat is actually full width at the top and these side pieces only come up to about here. They just have to cover those lower floor pieces, but these long ones have to do the whole lower floor piece and up that and then cover this whole area too. So that's a early BN1 upholstery difference um, that was later changed. Probably about summer of 54 is when that started getting changed over to the later style mat. So I'll go ahead and put those in and that should finish it off. Look at that, the finished trimmed boot and uh, went really well. Um, so this is the early BN1 spec uh, boot mat and side mats. So um, yeah, like I say, this, this change corresponded with a number of changes that happened with the BN1 uh, around the time they were uh, going with the unified body numbers. They did a number of things and in interior wise there was uh they replaced the boot mat with a with a wider uh full width mat um they changed the seal around the boot lid around that year um like i say this uh the spare wheel bag became a narrowed more uh tight fitting spare wheel bag um those pads on the wheel arches were changed uh top was changed slightly the tonneau cover was changed they had uh they put uh, turn snaps in those front corners um just a number of things the the tunnel itself went to a third style bn1 tunnel that had had better clearance over this um overdrive unit and uh, because the old one was shorting out on those terminals um, so they added a little hump on the back and that changed the carpet slightly. So it ended up being two pieces of carpet with a dart sewn in the back to go over that heart hump. Um, so a number of things. Also, the, uh, the two-piece dash was replaced with a solid dash. And uh, um, you can see my car has already got the non-adjustable steering. That happened earlier on. Um, but 
Yeah, the BN1s were really uh, a quickly moving evolution of a car uh, from the day they debuted in early 53 to the end of 54, early 55, the car was already transforming pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, it's pretty interesting doing a BN1 because depending on when it was built, there, there, there are always subtle differences in them. So, um, but anyway, that's the finished boot compartment. Really happy about that. Now I can, I can put in, uh, you know, the spare wheel strap. I can put the spare wheel in there once I get it set up. Um, and then, yeah, the, there's a little, uh, belt strap that hangs there and ties it up. I can put my tools and jack and handles bag back here and workshop manual, things like that to populate the boot. There we are. There's the complete boot equipment uh, on display. You've got the complete uh, factory toolkit, the knockoff hammer, the uh, factory jack, the jack handles, all in their associated bags. Uh, I produce those bags, Conqueror's Accurate, and the nice ultra thin vinyl that they were made out of. And period correct owner's handbook and service manual. And, uh, and then also you had your side screen bag and side screens. So these are the style two side screens that my car had. Um, earlier cars up until about November of 53 had just the Perspix side screens that just had a chrome metal frame. And then they switched to this style, the signal flap style. And you can uh, open those up. And then there was a third style after this that again came with later BN1s and BN2s that they got rid of the signal flap. So this was all uh, one thing and you could kind of lift up the bottom corner of it. It wasn't attached from here to here. Uh, there was no bottom chrome here. Um, so you could flip. Yeah, and this top chrome only came down to here. So you could flip this bottom corner open to, to open the door if you needed to. But this style, you just have to flip open that signal flap and you can actually latch it from the inside. So, um, And then of course, I've also got a full book of other goodies that I've collected. So, you know, heritage certificate, that's my Connolly certificate for my seats, uh, Austin warranty card, um, all the little handbooks, uh, lowering the hood instructions, which will be hanging off of the hood frame once I get that installed. Um, I've got all the variations of the various uh, brochures, um, overdrive instructions, grease gun instructions. These are on wax paper, so they would have probably come in the tool bag with the grease gun. Um, this is like, this is another complete brochure. Um, special tuning instructions, the... Uh, 100M modifications brochure uh, and some other Donald Healy pictures and whatnot. So yeah, lots of stuff. Just nice stuff to have with the car to add provenance. Um, yeah, so once we get, uh, I'll, I still have yet to restore the wheels on this car um, and get them all done with new tires and tubes. So once that's all done, and put the spare wheel in there as well and finish it off. Uh, one more thing I will point out with these tool bags is, yes, these are totally Conqueror's correct. So they are in this really thin, uh, ultra thin vinyl and they have even the correct snaps, which were quite a small snap. They're not the typical button snaps that you often see in upholstery. These are more like almost clothing snaps. Um, so, and then it has the proper off-white tape for wrapping up the tool roll. And uh, it should be noted, I also uh, provide these uh, spare wheel straps, all handmade. And uh, notice that the tool bag and jack bag and handles bag were all done in that matching black vinyl. That, that applies to pretty much all the car uh, hundreds. Uh, there have been exceptions where we found some in blue, but uh, it's very rare. Um, and of course, the side screen bag was always matched to color match to the car. So you got a blue side screen bag, but uh, black tool bags. Moving right along here, we've got uh, the main tunnel body section screwed in place. Uh, it just gets uh, some screws in the four corners there. 
and uh, they're like panhead Phillips. Um, yeah, so that just goes, you gotta make sure it's nice and tight up against there, which it is, and uh, now I can put in this removable section that just goes in here. So, um, yeah, and it just screws to the floor as well. And there you go, armrest is in place with, it, with its 10x snaps on all four corners. And wow, that looks great. And uh, yeah, just uh, pulls down nice. And that's how that goes. So now I can just finish off with the main floor mats. Okay, and there's the front mats and uh, under seat mats installed. So. They all go in there nicely. The under seat mats, uh, they just get a single snap right in the corner there and on the inside corner there. Uh, and then it, otherwise it just sits there so you can pull it out if it ever gets soaking wet. Um, same in the front mats as well. They get snaps in all four corners. And uh, yeah, these are a, another case where you cut the mat to fit so it get a perfect tight fit against the sides uh, going along the tunnel and along the sills there. So yeah, looks really great. So now I can just finish off by installing all the panels. I'm gonna start with uh, the doors. As you can see, um, I've installed the upper door vinyl here. Uh, so it just glues in place. And then now I'm gonna install the lower door vinyl. It just glues to that interface. So it's always important when you're getting your body work done uh, because yeah, this is a totally visible face on the inside as well because it's just covered in a layer of vinyl. So you want to make sure that's nice and smooth. You don't have weld lines or repair marks uh, because the vinyl shows everything. <laughs> so, so it just glues to the face here nicely and then at the front and bottom and back it just kind of wraps around. Um, it was glued um, and then there'll be a separate panel that goes even with this rib that goes up in the top. So I'm just preparing to install these rear quarter panels and my method for finding my original uh, screw holes is this little tool that I made years ago. It works like a charm. It's just a piece of uh, Meccano erector set. Um, but uh, yeah, you just slide it over the panel like so. Find your original screw hole on the inside and then you can mark it through on this side. So. And then once the screw holes are all marked, so one thing I should point out is these rear quarter panels, as well as the front kick panels, um, as well as these upper door panels, were all just uh, bare uh, eighth inch uh, plywood or just bare panel board that was covered in vinyl. There's no foam on these panels originally. So the way to do these holes nicely is you're going to drill the holes first and then I follow it up with this nice countersink punch. Um, I like to mark all my holes, bring the panel over to a bench, drill all the holes and then punch them all with this nice countersink punch and that allows the screw and washer to nicely seat in the panel. Uh, makes a big difference for final presentation. So as you can see I've now got that upper inner door panel installed. And there you can see how nicely those screws nestle in there once you uh, countersink the holes. So, makes a big difference. All right, coming along here, we've got the kick panels both installed. And here you can see the driver's side kick panel, how these nicely nestle in here. And uh, here's the uh, tag for uh, early BN1s had this plastic tag. And then later BN1s had a metal tag here. It was like a long uh, with curved ends. And then eventually they moved the whole tag into the engine bay on the firewall. But uh, so that finishes off those areas. Uh, like I say, I'm gonna wait on the main door panels and cords until I get the latches installed. But at this point, I've got the rear quarter panels in. So I'm gonna fit up the top frame. So I've poked through the three holes, which correspond to the holes in the body here. And uh, I'm just going to offer up the top carefully, uh, get one side started and then work in the other side and get her bolted up. 
And just like that, the top frame is in. Now this is my original top frame and I did have to do some straightening and realigning to get things working, but uh, yeah, I've just had it up and down and it seems to be functioning properly. So I can go ahead and tighten those bolts. Um, yeah, it's gonna, I'm not gonna put the top on for a little while. I'm gonna be making uh, a new top for this. Um, so I'm gonna take my time on that. So top will be coming a little later. And there you go. The cockpit rails are installed and just looking fabulous. Really happy with how those turned out with the anodized finish. And the seats are in. And these are my uh, fully trimmed seats that I did. I made these from scratch and these feature uh, authentic Connolly leather, which I have a certificate of authenticity for uh, from Connolly. So really nice to have. So this is nearing completion. I just need to finish the doors. And now I have an amendment. Uh, gross mistake on my part, but I had said that these uh, 10X snaps, the male snaps, are were bare brass. Um, I keep seeing bare brass ones. I have a drawer full of them from original cars that I've collected over the years. And uh, uh, I've got numerous photos of original cars that look like they are bare brass, but I stand corrected. They were, in fact, plated. Um, yeah, no big deal. I'm just going to take these out and get them plated. But for anybody watching, uh, I don't want to steer you wrong. So yes, they should be plated. They're not bare brass. Um, and clearly the plating, you know, didn't last very long and came off over time. Uh, so they end up looking like brass when they're old. But uh, no, they were indeed plated. So and that makes sense. I mean, everything else is plated, so why wouldn't they be? So uh, take those out and get them properly plated, I mean. And uh, uh, yeah, I believe they're nickel plated. Um, uh, they are nickel plated, whereas these turn snaps are chrome. And of course, the, uh, the female part that goes onto them is, is chrome as well. So I'm just uh, cutting my new uh, aluminum door trims. You can see I got new panels here. I got a protective coating to protect the face of it, uh, which I'll wait until the end to peel off. But they, the way they come, they're oversized, so uh, you gotta cut them down. So luckily I have my originals, and actually my originals were used at the body shop when we fit up my car, so I know that they fit properly with everything that's been done. So, um, and they are my originals, so I'm just gonna use these as my template. You just lay it on top of there and trace around it. And cut it out so I find it easiest with these guys if you stand them up on end like this and uh, do it onto the back side it's a lot easier to see what it needs to do so yeah just getting those cut up and then I can start fitting them and I'm gonna be drilling all new holes because uh, the body shop filled in all my old holes, some of them were larger than others and it was just easier to fill them in and uh, start fresh. And they actually did fill them in with weld, it wasn't just filler. So um, what I'm going to do, because it's weld in there, it's a lot harder than the original material of steel. Um, so I'm going to drill new holes and I'm going to put them right beside where the old ones were and uh, you know, just an eighth of an inch apart and they should go through no problem, get a nice bite. The screws for these are unique. They're very tiny and they're very fragile. And uh, it's one thing I've learned over the years, you gotta be really careful with those screws. You gotta make sure you get a nice hole drilled. Um, anything too tight or on an angle that it doesn't like, those screws will just snap. So uh, gotta get it right the first time. So just installing these uh, aluminum door trims now. So I've, uh, you have to install the bottom ones first. And I'm just following my originals exactly for just trimming the ends and getting the exact right profile. And uh, so with these, it's always best to start with the bottom screws first. So I've installed those, drilled and installed each one. You have to kind of put them in on a little bit of an angle because the sill underneath is so shallow, you, the drill wants to ride up and it's really easy for that to happen. So 
little bit of a down, downward angle, that's how they were. And then once those are installed and firm, then you can clamp the top. And it's actually not a perfect 90 degrees. It's almost 90 degrees in the front corners, but at the back here, it opens up a little bit more. So you have to really force it over to, to get it tight against the uh, sill there. So I always use a clamp and it's easy to just drill now down into the sill and put those top screws in. And once that's installed, I can offer up the uh, doorpost ones. I'm just going ahead and making up the uh, edge piping for these door tr trim plates. And you can see I've got a piece of my original piping that came off of there. And uh, generally on Healy 100s, the, the outer trim piping was made to match whatever the body color was, generally speaking. So Healy Blue had like this grayish color actually similar to what was on the seats, but you know, red cars generally had red piping or persimmon piping, depending on the car's interior. Coronet cream cars had like a cream colored piping. And then of course, later on, uh, uh, Abington built cars basically from then on had black piping, no matter what the color. But these early cars were color coded. And so I've just made this up, cut a strip of vinyl, um, you want to leave a fair size tail like more than a normal piping it just makes it easier for gluing and it's a thin core piping that i'm using um, and uh, yeah i just make it up and i start the core about an inch down from the end the reason being is these top corners you can see you can almost tell the core ends right there and then it just fades out and that's how they were finished it's just a nice neat finish like that and uh, so you want to do that in the top corners and it's just glued all the way along as you can see and then I'll just cut the ends and now I can offer this up to the car drill the holes and screw it in position okay so there you go there is the installed door shut face trim with its uh, shut face piping added nicely finishes it and so those are the aluminum door shut plates. So one thing I want to point out um, on my original shut plate here is that notice the cut and it was cut there deliberately and then bent at a steeper angle than, than it was produced in. And I didn't have to do that on the other side. The other side was not like that. But this side, I did have to do that because the cockpit rail was going to connect with it. So in order for it to clear that cockpit rail, I had to add, I had to do a little slice down there that is hidden by the quarter panel. And that's how you do that. And of course I used, you know, a block of wood against the aluminum to hammer it down the way it needed to. So you're not damaging the actual shut plate. So neat little fit adjustments that they did to make sure they fit. And it was only on this side. The other side, like I say, was just the standard shut plate. It didn't have that little slice and bend in it. Yeah, neat little things that you have to do to make them fit properly. But that finishes the passenger side now. At this point, I can now put in the rear cockpit rail and finish that all off. And there it is all installed. I've got the cockpit rail on now. You can see how that piping just tapers and dips in there top of the uh, plate dips under the under the uh, cockpit rail there so that's how they go um, beautiful looking really great uh, really happy to have all the cockpit rails on now they fit beautifully so yeah really nice so once i get the latch mechanisms in there to hold it um, yeah really loving that anodizing I should also point out too, these are all my original cockpit rail screws. Um, you'll notice the heads are, they sink right down in there. Um, they're just regular Phillips heads, they're chromed. Um, but the new cockpit rails and screws that you get, the, the heads are much bigger than, than these. So glad to have my original screws because they sink in there really nicely. So just getting ready to install the door panels, I've installed the latch mechanism right here in the door and uh, hooked it up with my new chrome handle and attached the cord to the back of the handle with a nut. And then the cord 
these are this is my original cord i just uh, retrim these with new vinyl that i sew fold up and sew onto the cord as original and then there's another screw down there all these screws are countersunk into the door so it stays nice and flush so when the door the outer door panel goes on to finish it it's not sitting up on anything and i'll be using all my original screws here again uh, using my little uh, hole finding tool so I'll go along and poke all those through now this door panel because the door panels were padded um, and i use like a synthetic like a cotton material uh, thin wadding on the back side so because of that you can't just send a drill through the door panel because a drill will grab that wadding and turn it up into a little ball and create a big mess so you have to mark each hole and then poke it through carefully with an awl and that's how we make those and then you can send your screws in so we'll go about that and uh, install the door panel okay and there we are the door panel is installed we've got a little chrome escutcheon at the latch there um, there is one i haven't put in this screw because it's not a screw it's actually a, a 10x stud for the side screens and uh, i've seen some cars like later bn1s and bn2s that have a screw beside the stud like they're with uh, about an inch apart there but my car only had the one hole in that spot and it was big enough for the stud so uh, i'm assuming that my car never had a second screw there so just following what my car had but uh yeah wow does that ever look good so this is uh, the early style of door panel in that it, there's no stitching around the outside perimeter. That's another change that happened uh, in the summer of 54, uh, late summer, fall of 54, as they were making all these changes, as they were going with unified body numbers. Um, yeah, all kinds of little detail changes. But yeah, the stitching around the door panels was added at that time. But uh, so mine has the earlier style, so that looks great. And there we go, the finished door panels. So that about finishes the interior now, um, less the weather equipment. So I'm gonna end this video here. Um, that is how you trim a BN1 interior. I will be back with a follow-up video to show you how to install the top and tonneau and side screens. Uh, until then, I'm Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast. This is my BN1 restoration. We'll see you next time.